Hi there. So today I've come out to look at elderflower and talk about the benefits of this lovely tree that Mother Nature brings to us. So elderflower is native to Europe but grows in the northern hemisphere with different types of variety. This is typically Sambucus nigra and it has loads of health benefits. It typically comes out in spring. So we have the spring equinox around March the 20th to the 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. And then we have the summer solstice around the 20th to the 22nd as well, depending on the year of June. So right now, elderflower is out in bloom. And elderflower comes out in spring to basically help us transition from a period of darkness of winter to the light of summer. So elderflower in Ayurveda has um, a taste of being bitter and pungent. It's got an energy in the body of being cooling, but then a post-digestive effect of being quite pungent. So this may basically means that it increases the heat in our bodies. So if we're talking about the heat being increased in our bodies, what does that mean basically? So elderflower is diaphoretic, meaning it helps us to sweat. It helps induce sweat. So it's great if you're suffering from things like fevers or generally to raise the body temperature, burn pathogens and toxins and expel them from the body via sweating. It's also great for upper respiratory issues, for example, uh, mucosity, if you have things like sinusitis, colds, coughs, flus, influenza. So you can also use elderflower, for example, to clear the sinuses um, any blocked or stagnant energy, any mucosity in the upper respiratory tract um, in a vapor or steam bath. So you make an elderflower infusion and you can basically put a towel over it, over it in a bowl and inhale uh, the steam as an inhalation and uh, steam bath. So it really helps boost the immune system as well of the body. It's a great immune booster and can be paired with things like echinacea or vitamin C and Traditionally, it's been used for coughs and colds and flus, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere and in the North of Europe. For example, we know, many of us know things like elderflower cordial, but you can also use elderflower to make things like elderflower um, syrups with honey, elderflower champagne or kombucha or elderflower vinegar. So you can also use elderflower to make tinctures, for example, by pick, picking a few of the flowers and soaking it in a high quality vodka, for example, or high quality alcohol for a few months, minimum I'd say one to two months, and then you can use it um, as a tincture. For example, you could put a few drops every spring in, your, in a tea or an infusion or take it in water. So as I said, elderflower comes out in the transition periods and as a tree it really has an effect on us on a holistic level. So what does that mean? So basically on a physical level, on our physical body as we just spoke about, but also on an energetic and on a mental, emotional, intellectual and on a spiritual level. It represents light, it represents transition, it represents purification and cleansing of our bodies from this dormant, dark stages of winter and really helping us transition through spring into summer. So based on this effect of having an energy of cooling with a cooling nature and a post-digestive effect of heating, it's really a balancing herb, but it's really used to expel toxins from the body. In spring, many people suffer from things like allergies, coughs, cold, weakened immune system. And the Ayurvedic perspective is that during winter, toxins and imbalances or illnesses in the body lay dormant because they're basically almost frozen in the atmosphere. So in Ayurveda, we always have to understand the concept of macro and micro. So macro is the fact that the larger things that happen, the phenomena that happen on a larger planetary level, on a universal level, also happen on a micro level in our bodies. So in a cold climate, if things are frozen, for example, in the mountains with ice and snow, then on a micro level, on a cellular level in our body, they're also stagnant. And then in spring, as the sun shines and melts all this snow and all this frozen energy in the atmosphere, the same happens in our bodies. Many of us might have a weakened immune system or compromised immune system because all the toxins are kind of flowing around in our blood. Um, often we talk about hay fever. So in its name, this is implicit to the fact that something external is affecting us on an internal level, no? So hay, 
hay or or pollen or things that are cut and things that come out um, in nature have an impact on our body on a causing us to have fever for example and what is a fever it's it's your body and your immune system saying hey there's something foreign coming into my body so I'm going to heat up the body basically to sweat out the toxins and also when you heat things to a higher temperature you're also mitigating any effects of harmful pathogens or bacteria in your body so elderflower really helps to heat up but also expel from the body it's a transition herb so this transition as it comes out as a flower and blooms in spring it really helps our bodies to transition so as it helps our bodies to transition and this has this pungent effect this heating effect elderflower is also great as a diuretic so to help uh, us urine basically um, and expel toxins from the body through urination through sweating moving heating up and moving the liquids out of the body so it's also great for things um, like um, infections um, for example urinary infections and really good for say kidney and bladder health as well elderflower is really good at moving mucus as well it almost melts and moves this mucus from the upper respiratory tract and expels it helps to expel it from the body and if we look a bit a little bit of the folklore and mythology around elderflower in the north it's said that mother elder lives in the tree and we should respect her and ask permission always before using her medicine so that's before picking her flowers or using her leaves maybe in dry form also as an infusion or in ancient uh, traditions around the world her bark was also used but really you can use elderflower for example in an infusion form around spring you could use it to increase your immunity but also help it expel these toxins from the body for example by taking around 20 to 30 grams in a tea or infusion every single day so you can do this about a period of for around a period of two weeks to a month i have been taking elderflower throughout the whole of spring since she started blooming i've asked mother elder and taken her flowers in infusion form every single day pretty much um, it's also great for as we said already since it's heating for infections so things also like candida overgrowth or any bacterial infections within the body it's great for chronic illnesses since it's a it's um, diaphoretic as we said it's antibacterial antiviral and also a great immune booster so if you have any type of chronic illness or anything you know any chronic illnesses that really affect your immune system um, having an autoimmune effect in your body and then elderflower is great just to boost your energy it's also can be used and taken uh, by mothers and children so whilst breastfeeding it can be used as a galactagogue basically meaning that it can help induce breast milk it can help the flow of breast milk there is a blackberry bush down here whenever I go into nature the blackberries always grab me either it's my hair or my clothes and there's a blackberry bush down here that is not allowing me to film this video just wanted to share that I love blackberries and they're very medicinal so I will do another video on blackberries but just so you know they can be also a bit tyrannous and <laughs> grab you I think for me I perceive this as them saying, hey, use me, use me, take me, I'm here, use my leaves and use my berries. So, Mrs. Blackberry, we will come back to you another time. As we said, since it comes out in spring and it helps us flow from winter into summer, it really helps flow and movement in the body in general by heating up and causing things to be expelled from the body. These were all physical effects of elderflower in the body. Let's look at the some of the energetic really on your your energetic and subtle body and subtle energy so it was also said that mother elder and the elder tree was almost symbolic of a transition from the underworld almost to cross over into this underworld for me i interpret that as the fact that elderflower comes out after a period of darkness it helps us come into the light so it helps us almost move from the darkness into the light. For me also, elderflower really can help people, for example, in your life if you are struggling from things like depression, anxiety, if you need an, something to uplift your spirits, 
to bring up your energy, to give you that positive energy and that light energy from the photosynthesis of the sun going into the leaves, going into the plant, this high prana energy of, of light. It can really help you if you're moving from a period of darkness into the light and can be used um, for, for rituals or ceremonies or just in general, just to help you in the healing process. So it's really recommended for people who are suffering from lower mood, low energy, to give you that boost, to bring you into feelings of hope, into pursuing your dreams, into helping you uh, find your creativity in that inner fire. Because as we said, in an, in an Ayurvedic perspective, it's heating, it's cooling, but it's also heating in the post-digestive effect. So this heating energy of fire has a purgative and cleansing um, effect and cleansing properties. So on a general level, it can really help to cleanse things from the body. It can help cleanse and purify your body, soul, and mind. I also wanted to say from a dream perspective, something I wanted to share um, because I'm becoming more and more in touch with the energetic and subconscious of um, life and, and myself. So last night I actually had a dream before I was going to come and shoot this today. And I had a dream where I had a child and it was a newborn child and I was giving breast milk. But my breast milk was actually causing the child to have a cold energy and have, um, have colic and flatulence in the body. Basically, this can happen in Ayurveda. If a child has gas or digestive issues, it can be linked to the breast milk of the mother and the diet of the mother, basically, because if you think about it, everything we consume is used to produce everything in our body. We are holistic, whole beings. We're not separate. Um, so the theory and perspective in Ayurveda that everything, the ahara, the food that you intake, nourishes all your tissues in your body and nourishes uh, your breast milk even. And I had this dream and I thought it was very representative of, of me coming today to talk about and connecting with the elder, mother elder and the elder flower. Um, so on that note, as we said, it's a, it can be used to induce the production of breast milk and also can be used even for children um, in things like fevers or to boost, uh, boost immunity. So I would give a very diluted infusion if using if being used on children or if you don't want to take it internally for children uh, you can also put elderflower in the bath um, in a hot bath this can help sweating it can also help uh, with this antimicrobial activity it can help sweat off like toxins and pathogens in the body so other uses of elderflower are to purify and cleanse an area you can for example either dry the flowers on their own or you could cut up a, cut off a little bit and maybe two or three sprigs, let it dry, and then wrap it with some cord or string and use this as a purifier, just as you would sage. So you can burn this and purify a room or a space. You can also hang sprigs up um, uh, at the front of your house or above a door to really cleanse the area and help warn off um, negative or, or unwanted energies. When we burn things, um, in all practices around the world, for example, in shamanic practices or those of uh, Native America, when we burn things, we purify. Just as the sun, as it's very hot in summer, it can it cause all water to evaporate. So if water evaporates, you're basically taking life away from that area. When we look at the desert, for example, this dry, arid plain, we say, you know, it's almost a, a void, a void of life unless there's obviously oases and places where there's water because water brings life. So when we burn elderflower and the smoke that comes off almost as an incense, it can be used really to cleanse the area and cleanse of uh, pathogens and um, unwanted microbes basically in an environment. Elderflower can also be used for things like period pain or light periods or even lack of periods because it has this stimulating heating effect. Um, anything that has a stimulating heating effect in Ayurveda is really good for pain relief. So as it's good for pain relief in periods, it can also be used for pain relief in body, so used externally. So you can apply it as a poultice or make, say, um, a water infusion or use it as a vapor on a localized area. Appa. Or it can be used in a localized area, for example, in a localized vapor bath or in the baths we already said for things like joint pain, swelling, 
sprains um, in your wrists or in your ankles, for example. You can also gargle with elderflower, so like an elderflower infusion that's cooled down. You can either put it with a bit of honey and gargle it for a sore throat or dryness in the throat area. And you can also use elderflower for things like infections or, or skin inflammation. So, for example, my mother is struggling from blepharitis and um, swollen eyes, basically. So what we've done is made an, an elderflower infusion with chamomile, got some organic cotton buds and cotton wool, uh, dipped it in when it's cooled down, and basically using it just around the eyes as an eye bath and an eye wipe. So I'd really like to just end by saying the elderflower is really symbolic of rebirth, regeneration, moving from the darkness to the light, of purification, um, imagination, moral awareness and hope. It's really a flower that can be used if, in practices of, of giving hope. So if you want to use elderflower at home and you want to use it on a more spiritual and energetic um, way just to help you, you know, boost your mood, boost that energy, if you're going through a hard time and you really want to be able to connect with Mother Nature and connect with the plant. Um, Mother Nature is there to support us. You know, the universe is there to support us. So all you have to do is just ask. Almost like uh, all religions have done and do over the world, praying. It's really connecting with the divine um, every single day. And you, connect, you can connect with Mother Nature and the divine through plants, through the power of plant medicine. I mean, Mother Nature left us all these medicinal herbs and plants on the whole planet to connect with. And it really brings tears to my eyes saying these things because I feel it so intrinsically in my body and in my heart and in my soul. So, in that saying that, if you'd like to use elderflower, I mean, and take elderflower at home and to connect with her, there's a little spider here, a white spider that always is in the elderflower tree. I'm not sure what kind of spider it is, but every time I forage elderflower, I see this white spider. It's so beautiful. You can take an elderflower infusion, and if you want to connect and use um, elderflower to cleanse your energy, you know, purify on a body, mind, soul level, make an infusion, hold it up to your heart, or maybe meditate with the the liquid, you know, the water, connect with the energy of the flower. And I just wanted to leave you with a little mantra that you can say, um, while you're connecting with the, the powerful medicine um, of the mother elder. I cleanse, purify my body and mind. I discover in my unconscious my doubts and my fears, and I awaken to a new, more lucid and positive consciousness. I see the light after the dark. My dreams and imagination are a vehicle to the light. So I hope you enjoyed this video and information about Mother Elder, Elderflower and her amazing benefits. Later on I'll also be doing a video about elderberry when the flower transitions from spring when it's in flower to the berries in autumn. Another transition period and very important moment to look after your health and boost your immunity in Ayurveda. And I'll be bringing you more information and lots of high vibrational health tips from Mother Nature, from Gaia, Nature's Wisdom and her Earth Medicine. So namaste, lots of love and lots of nature's medicine. And I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to the Gaia Ayurveda community if you'd like to know more.